concentrate on three aspects social aspect next one is and third one is to protect the environment now all of these are very big goal goal baat hai are in sab bol sakte hain but kaise how wo to batao that is the flexibility they care on the government and community Please listen. 2015 was over. Most of the targets of MDG was not fulfilled. Then they started thinking. In fact, they started thinking of a new set of targets. But we achieved some. We achieved some. <coughs> September 2000. You, the lady. You, you. How much number do you expect in your next exam? Twenty nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Let's see. How much number do you expect? Sorry. Nine point five. Nine point five. Who is your close most most bosom friend? Who is who is there? Okay. Our expectation last time. Eight point six. Expectation. Our expectation last time was eight point six. How much you got? Seven point. Thank you. Answers. It means set target high, and then you will go near to that. These goals are all like that. These targets are all like. Okay. So next, next. Now we can can do sustainable development, right? And now we came into the picture after the completion of the period for MDGs. We entered to the SDG, and this SDG is we had seventeen goals and one sixty nine targets. Now it exploded. Dimension has exploded. Why it has exploded? Because we have high-end computers, we 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 have we can manage any multi-dimensional data. We have that now. Now next time after the whole thing, we maybe have some thousands. Okay, go oh, next one. So these are the seventeen goals, but which one is you? With beard, yes. everybody is with beard. So, yes. so, ah, uh, booty board the bottle, booty, booty board the bottle. It's it's so. Are you happy? Are you happy? Are you happy? Are you happy? Countries. Like the landlocked countries, 
have no mandate to take care of the marine species and other things. Right? So many of the targets are not applicable for all the time. But see, what is new in this entire story? They are talking about no poverty, zero hunger, good health and wealthy, quality education, gender equality, clean water and sanitation, affordable and clean energy. Somebody was talking in the morning. This is work of economic growth, industry, innovation, and um, all of you are sitting here, it's possible to reduce inequalities. Number two, sustainability and community, responsive consumption, climate action, life in the water, life on land, peace, justice, and strong institutions. This is the beginning of the CV, which is the beginning of the CV, which is the beginning of the 1670. There is no work that is not done. But here it comes, nobody started this. Okay. We are, we are roaming around past top areas, reduce poverty, reduce poverty, reduce poverty, give free rations. Now I am translating what you see in our country's government. The main slogan was, no one should be left behind, sustainable ego. And what is the slogan of government of India? Sapka saath, sapka vita. Are the same? Are the same? Why they are same? All countries in the world, they are, have aligned their governance in the lines of sustainable development goals. They have aligned them up. They speak in their own way. It is one way of speaking, communicating with their own citizens. But sapta saath, sapta because no one should be left behind. That's it. That's when we talk about Swachh Bharat Mission. Earlier there was Nirmal Bharat Mission. But why Swachh Bharat Mission was so, so important? Special goal. Clean water and sanitation. Jal Mission. Arthar Jal, Arthar Nal, Arthar Jal. Have you heard this? So many advertisements and RCs are going on. And, and seriously, uh, some work is done in many parts of the country. So, so this is actually targeting. So all governments are now aligned to it. Right? So I have, I want just two minutes. Okay. So I have, I have, I have, I think, give uh, one minute, one minute, two minutes. Okay. Can we go for the next? So, next please, next please, next please, here we have 248, 248 indicators to monitor. We have a dashboard where this 248 indicators, India is not having 48 indicators right now, India, having, uh, India is not having all the indicators, global indicators, we have some uh, national level indicator. So we have a national indicator distribution of what? Can I go for the next? Oh, okay. Go for the next. Go for the next. Right. There are 284, but these 284, some of them are national indicators looking towards our own needs. We have introduced some new indicators. That's all statistical indicators. Some indicators are a period of time. Right? Right? I, 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 can, I can discuss some. The other. Okay. <laughs> can we, can we go? Uh, next. Yes. These are the mainly our data sources. We also depend on private sector data. It is reliable all the time, so private sector is not reliable. But we, we, we check the reliability first and then we use it. And also some international data. Then, 
So these are some of our publications where you can they are available free on net. So you can check and see how India is progressing over a period of time. They are all available. And next, next please. Yes. Now I find it in agreement with DP and United Nations Residential Commissioner's Office in Delhi. So I was a regular uh, uh, part of that meeting uh, during our tenure, my that tenure. So I know how we have uh, prepared our own set of indicators. And next part. <coughs> Next please. It is not available at panchayat level, at municipal level, because in, according to our constitution, we have a three story structure center, state, and the local level government. Panchayat level information are not available. We are trying to make that infrastructure so that the local level infrastructure information starts coming. Next one. Next one. Next one. Next one. Next one, uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, sir. The article, the articulation was wonderful where you discussed about how we are afraid of the death of the blue planet, how to measure sustainability, and the development of MDG. Thank you so much, sir. And I would also love to welcome Dr. Mahananda Kanjilal, principal of Durgapur Women's College. We are really happy to have you, ma'am. We are heartily welcome you, ma'am, Dr. Mohananda Kanjinal, Principal of Durgapur Women's College. Welcome. Now I request our Vice Principal, Professor Dr. K. M. Hussain, to give a token of love to our speaker. Please, Dr. Hey, <laughs> It is good to do. I'll come to school. I will put a little bit of a tight place. Dr. Jayanta Patacharya is a professor in the Department of Mining Engineering at the Indian Institute of Technology, Karakpur, India. He was also the head of school of Environmental and Engineering Institute. He was also a visiting professor to the Carter University, Australia. Professor Bhattacharya is a renowned scientist in the area of environmental technology and management. He is a particle for absorption of new soluble compound from wastewater streams. His work are published in the premier journals of wastewater engineering. He is also an expert in the area of environmental clearance, land acquisition, and resettlement of people. He is an authority in the rules and regulation related to environmental and forest clearance of projects. He works as a commission and environmental governance director. He has more than 150 papers in various national and international journals. His book and publication can be seen in wide educational products and services website. 
Now, I will request to share this valuable insight. Sir, please. Uh, I was thoroughly enjoying Mr. Bush's lecture, as, uh, and, but uh, my lecture would be, uh, my topic would be slightly different from his. Yes, uh, I'll just dwell upon the theoretical and philosophical development that has gone into the area of sustainable development. So it's, uh, this is very important for uh, all of you to understand how web this has actually generated. So UN actually caught it up later, but you know, much before that there was a development and there's a background to the development that will, I'll try to explain and talk to So this, you know, is, uh, this is the topic that I would say. Dichotomy means, you know, there are many contradictory things in the, in the practice and the philosophy of sustainable development. So uh, this is what you know we like to capture. We like to understand how these things essentially develop. How these things essentially develop and uh, where they lead us to. Okay. And so this, you know, uh, you know, in the last day uh, we generally record environmental destruction from the time of industrial revolution. So it's about, say, starting from 17th century onwards, we generally try to understand how the environmental degradation has taken place all over the world. And so this, you know, what we generally put in mind, you know, this is a typical kind of, you know, a lot of changes that have been taking place. Major things are, you know, very many developmental activities have actually brought in number of changes in the, in the world that we need. Climate change being one, very important thing. Industrial development coupled with that, there are species related challenges. There are many other things that we essentially find in this. But before I go into this, I just would like to explain to you the, the progress in the concepts of sustainable development. So uh, Mr. Ghosh was explaining about this UN development, about sustainable development. The topic of this. This is a typical the, the Brundtland definition, you know, the crux, not a definition, essentially, it was essentially uh, raised from one of our works. That was the, I mean, the report that she submitted to Dutti, you know, in about 1987. The, the report came out, it was started in 1983. Interestingly, what you know, following to that, what it essentially talks about that, you know, uh, and the, another very important, you know, uh, saying that we go is that we have not inherited the world from our forefathers, we have borrowed it from our children. This is a very important statement. That means that, you know, for all of us, all generations has to explain what it has done to the children. That, that that the generation follow. So this is the premise that essentially brings in. But what is very important for all of you is that you know frontier economics, and we are understanding this. The frontier economics developed from late 16th century, you know, say almost at the time when uh, say uh, or early 17th century, we generally find that you know this uh, essentially the we will have begin to talk about uh, say environment. Very interestingly, you know, nature or the art that we know as that we generally find out that you know one very important thing that comes, you know, there was an adversary role of nature. When we started, you know, even Newton, Descartes, Francis Bacon, the scientists and philosophers like that, at that point of time used to think. That you know, and they used to essentially propone it, propone, propose that you know, is uh, art or the planet is an adversary. That is a challenge that we have to face, and that we have to win over. And that is how it was one of the premises on which this industrial development took place. 
and that we say today is about 300 years from that time we generally find we are still into the frontier economics domain. I will explain that, try to explain a little bit of this. And you know, as uh, the typically frontier economic leading thinkers and scientists who are believers of frontier economics at that point of time, many considered that the planet as an adversary that needs to be defeated and oh, very interesting. Central to the idea was that humans are the supreme beings and so superior that they have the right to dominate over other living beings as they are strong and intelligent. That is what you know we have best out on us that we are we, we are the smartest and we are the most intelligent variety. So you know we have a we have the natural right to dominate over others. More importantly, the dominant thinking was that humans can control and manage everything in the planet. This was early in 17th century when we are just going into the industrial revolution at that point of time. Think of that time of the world where there was, you know, very, uh, the, the resources were abundant and the, uh, everything was, you know, uh, looked green at that point of time. This gave rise to the concept of resource, manage, resource management based on the premise that humans can manage everything. <laughs> Humans can manage everything. This is the idea. You know, it's a, if we are creating a problem, we would be able to manage it. This is the idea. You know, it is, that is how it has developed. Nothing much has changed. It has remained more or less the same as it is today. But what has gone into thinking is that we are essentially trying to think different. But nothing much has changed as yet. In the late 20th century, you know, it is surprised to know many of you. You know, only in 1965, we first came to know that the pathogens in water can cause disease. Think of this. The science has to wait. You know, it's not only a not even say about 60 or 60 years back that we didn't know the role of microbes in our world. I mean, we didn't even know that the microbes can cause diseases in our diseases in us. And today it's all prevalent. You can see after COVID, it is amply clear that you know the microbes and you know virus can do what can what they can do to us. So it's a, that this knowledge is very young. This knowledge is not very mature as yet. See, hundred years in science, hundred years in philosophy doesn't make doesn't make a much of a progress. So this you know is say this is the. Resource management is the management of the relationship between humans and the environment. It involves managing all components of the biological environment, including living and non-living components. Material and energy efficiency as a solution. Here I will just give you a very interesting example. End of the five solution that we talk of, circular economy as a solution to the growing demand in the world. Technology can solve problems that it creates. Valorizing waste, today we are thinking the start of the resource management concept. Business as usual with cosmetic changes and while non-renewable resources are being discovered, the resource is being distributed to the ever aspiring society. Now, what is very interesting is, I would say you know, many of you have seen these ambassador cars which were used as taxis. In Kolkata and India, you know, you know taxis. If you just see, you know, today, if you just compare with the Maruti 800 car, Maruti 800 car can also carry five people. So can the ambassador normally, unless otherwise somebody else is not forcing you. And it is half of its weight, and it consumes. It consumes. Half uh, or one third of the petrol that the normal ambassador taxi consumes for a kilometer of travel. Okay, now what is the difference it makes? It essentially is a point that you know this we are using the resources more efficiently, but does it change our behavior? It does not. What happens is once this the Maruti 800 comes in, I mean, the comparison that comes in. You know, you find that one thing of 800 becomes cheaper. More and more people think that if they are using an efficient car, and as a result of that, the purchase of cars essentially increase. So it does not 
essentially go against the concept of environmental protection. So essentially resource management, though we say that we can manage resources, can provide us a solution, is not essentially a solution. It is something we are just essentially postponing the problem, number one. And secondly, we might be distributing the problem among other problems so as not to see them in the right perspective. So this is what you know is a this is what is the resource management that we find in 20th century. What does not change much? We are still with the same. We are only, I mean, uh, so Mr. Ghosh was essentially also trying to explain that we are always trying to find new words, new, I mean, uh, new paraphrases, and then we are trying to understand that you know this we are doing something great, not necessary, right? So this is this is a this is the one example that I am putting in resource management versus resource conservation. If you are going for the sustainability in the right sense, the next move is resource conservation. This is where we have to go. How do we go about this? Now, this, you know, we essentially resource management is about substitution, enhancing efficiency, innovation. Increased use of technology, more or the less, no net loss. We generally call it no net loss as a key concept. And then, you know, we go from here, resource management to resource conservation, where we are just going to find, reduce, reduce, protect, and conserve. This last three become the most important part in sustainability. If we are essentially going for sustainability, we have to go for more of conservation than that of management. Sustainable development principles, three essential sustainable development principles that comes in the theory. Is that you know, ethics, three E's. Ethics, equality, and equity. Behavior, justice, truth, honesty, and constitution, three E's. Ethics, equality, and equity. Behavior, justice, truth, honesty, and constitution of brings to the part of the things that we talk of. In terms of equality and equity, this is what is inequality that we know of. The, you know, the fruit goes on between everybody the same you know, platform, but essentially someone being more disadvantaged. So he or she would not be able to essentially get the benefit. When you make it equity, yeah. in such cases, we make it accessible for everyone. So this, this is the difference it makes in terms of equality and equity. And then finally, the justice, where we are just making it sure that it can come, it can this, that equity can come continuously to each and every generation and can be further. And so this, you know, this is the typical things. Well, having said that, I think, you know, uh, that whether we are making progress, whether we are making progress in the sense that, you know, if we just see, we are not discussing about sustainability, when we are early 2000, the concept was planet, people, and the people is now functionalized in the Indian context, you know, in CSR, that you must be knowing, that, you know, corporate social responsibility, and then, you know, in the planet essentially got changed here, it would be here, CER, corporate environmental responsibility. But it is, in economics, the triple bottom line maintains that the companies should commit to focusing as much as social and environmental concerns as they do on profits. Triple bottom line theory posits that instead of one bottom line, there should be three. I mean, this is what was the thinking, you know, early 2000. Then we are now currently effectively entering into the ESG concept. You know, most of the time, this is a buzzword now in most of the corporate about ESG, environmental social governance. Well, I mean, uh, one governance essentially adds to this, while most of the things are saying here, G provides for governance in the organization. The idea of governance is the idea of governance is that you know the that whether you know, the, in the corporate ways that we work on, whether they are ethics and equality and, you know, and the equity are being pursued or not. And moreover, 
ESG today, I mean, uh, sorry to say that, but ESG has essentially become more and more a tool to essentially capture the non-financial risks and opportunities inherent in a company's day-to-day activities. So essentially, likely the goals are essentially changing, not to more towards the efficiency of the organization rather than thinking about the planet. So whether this is a buzzword that goes into the the, the wording is essentially to provide a, 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 a making world a more sustainable thing, but essentially it is not going there. ESG is that, you know, the goal of ESG is to capture all you know, non financial risks and opportunities inherent in companies' day to day activities. So these are the typically the ESG goals that essentially find environmental, climate change, biodiversity, water efficiency carbon efficiency and all that. What is the governance part is important. Many of this, that the ethics I have talked about, compliance, board independence, executive compensation, shareholder democracy and all this. So it is more about, essentially about reduction of risks in the business. Now, criticism of ESG, one of the biggest criticism of ESG is that it is superficial and perfunctory. The concern is that organizations are encouraged to adopt ESG to improve their reputation and standing among investors, employees, and customers, only to treat it as nice to have secondary to the real priorities. This is a major challenge that we see, and that it has been given another interesting aspect. Whether a particular company is essentially good for investment is essentially also a also, also from the measure of ESG matrices. So the, the, the typically the thing says you know, what the companies are essentially following, perhaps important for you, but what people in the business they essentially enter into this area. We are essentially making progress in the area of environmental 50 percent, governance 39 percent, and social 37 percent. This is the kind of performance that we are achieving as of date. It is not delivering on a meaningful impact on the society or the environment. The evidence that it delivers returns is not convincing. This is what the criticism of ESG, you know, is kind of thing. One very important thing for all of us to understand now is to emerging biodiversity challenges, climate change, rising human habitat conflict due to shifting habitat, forest fragmentation, gene pool reduction leading to dominant diseases and reducing the Disease resistance, forest resource depletion, industrial development, encroaching in the forest, poverty leading the people to violate forest resources. This has been seen, seen very many cases. You know, if you find that you know forest areas, particularly during COVID time, what you could see is that that people who lost their jobs, lost their jobs, many of them, particularly the, you know, uh, uh, the people with unskilled, unskilled laborers, people of unskilled labor, they essentially went back to the forest to plunder the forest. There are instances like this. So this kind of vulnerabilities are thereby resulting in the changes in the forest. Right, another very important thing that is coming in, you know, is all of us should be very careful about the threat of invasive species. Threatening the food chain. This is actually happening in all invasive species for sustainable development. This is where it's, you know, the jungle and garden paradox. See, one very important thing about beauty or understanding of, you know, uh, order is to see that, you know, make everything in the form of a garden. A garden is a human intervention as the nature never creates garden. A garden is full of selective monocultural species. So this is a garden is not something that we help nature with. What else we should do? A jungle is the original creation of nature where everything survives, but by, com by competition, all species struggle in the jungle. So this is what, you know, it's a major shift that has to take place. 
in almost all kind of beautification that we see, we are not essentially doing any service to the environment. We are trying to do some service to ourselves, to the humans, but essentially not serving the species that the live around us, birds, animals, and all other things. So this is one major departure that we have to take. I mean, these are the challenges that we will face towards the path of sustainable development. Sustainability at a personal level. I mean, you know, this is also very important for all of us. Limiting requirements at all levels. How can you do this? I mean, this is, has to be a path that has to be followed. Distribution of wealth for the next generation, away from the kith and kings. You know, essentially, inheritance is all about our kith and kings, that whether it can be, how it can go to the next generation is more important than essentially distributing the wealth to the kith and kings. Saving, protecting, and limiting the use of all kinds of resources. Among the humans, various tribal roots practice what they can be called a sustainable limit. Though we do not appreciate, but you know, the tribal groups essentially practice which can be called as sustainable living. We have to respect, though not ideal, but it is closer to the sustainable goal than the modern life, the, the life that we lead. Using non renewable resources as much as possible for energy and material needs. This is also a path. Using more of daytime hours in the life and work. This is one thing we can also try to adopt. Accept competition in daily life as normal. Everything including life is, is exhaustible. Everything comes to an end. So these are the things that we have to understand at a sustainability at a personal level. By the words, are you move, are you moving towards sustainable society? No, not yet. Can we think of a radical new development of sustenance? Not yet. Will the consumption led growth do it taper down in the future? No. Any solution? Only conservation, conservation, and conservation. I mean, we can only go on the path of sustainability in a normal sense only through conservation. So this is, I think, you know, this. I think. Thank you very much for your patience. Here it is. Thank you. Very much. <laughs> Any question? Yeah, students, if See, the point is, as a member of UN, we have a new, many UN charters to face. I mean, UN, we have to comply with many UN charters. I mean, not only in SDG, but also about anything, about law, about welfare, people's welfare. We have to follow certain UN charters. I mean, and that comes through, even the sustainable development essentially is a UN charter. 
Now, uh, the question is, you know, uh, every representative of the people, I mean, if it is a political party, it has a political mandate. I mean, the development is essentially following his or her political mandate, obviously. You know, it's, uh, there is no doubt about that. But at the same time, as I, I fully appreciate that, that, you know, uh, if you want development for your country, how else you generally look at development? Say, development means people get power, people get power for their lighting their houses, people get water, people get education. This is a normal society generally try to provide. But the question, the larger question is, I mean, the way we are dealing with this problem, say, you know, we are not talking about anything much about population control as well. This is a very serious thing that, you know, government should essentially embark on. Because there are many things, but you know, if you cannot, you see, you cannot create an equitable development for 1.6 billion people. I mean, let us face it. Let us face it. I mean, you know, you can do cosmetic changes, you can do many things, you can ask for that. But unless we bring down our load, we cannot essentially control the, I mean, uh, uh, the way we are doing. So I think, you know, this is a very important question, whether they are going the right path or not, whether, you know, obviously as an environmental scientist or environmentalist as such, I am always paying to see that, the, you know, uh, our forests are shrinking at, it, at different points. We are seeing major challenges, say invasive species is a major challenge, which is essentially linked to development. So more the development, more is the influence of invasive species is coming into that. You know, it's a major challenge. I mean, not, not so much reported today, but you know, even in, a, in five to 10 years time, you will find that this is going to be a major challenge for us to, for our food security, for our, you know, disease control, all kind of things, you know, these are the things. So, essentially, uh, yes and no to your answer question. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. So, have miraculously highlighted very important point such as economic destruction, frontier economics, resource management, resource conservation, and many more. Now, I'll request uh, Dr. Professor Sanjay Sengupta, HOD of Civil Engineering Department, to hand him a token of love. Hello, hello, hello. Now we will have a small tea break. We'll be here again after five minutes.
Halo, halo, halo cik, halo, halo, halo cik, halo, halo, halo. Halo, 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 halo,
আগে ম্যাম শুরু করবেন কিন্তু আগে ম্যাম শুরু করবেন একবার জিজ্ঞেস করে নিলেন I request everyone to have their seats. We'll be proceeding with our program. Please have your seats. And please maintain silence. We are going to proceed with our event. I request volunteers to please manage madam sudeshna choudhary is a sustainability evangelist she is a very passionate about data for good and sustainability solution and is keen on networking and collaborating across industries and academic institutions she is the ieee india council vice chair for women in engineering ieee senior member of kolkata section and past chair for women in engineering ieee kolkata section she is the first chapter lead in india for women in data and asia region head for the same now i will request to share her valuable insight ma'am please hey what you go
is from US and the second one has an India background. And the reason I chose through these two stories because I myself was part of it. So the first one again is on uh, wildfire. So every year across the world, all of you must be already aware of it. Those who are very much acquainted to the uh, global news, you must be aware of how wildfires are really causing destruction across the world, across the globe. And I will take just one example because I lived through that experience, not in the fire, but supporting a customer, a client who was responsible for some part of it. So in 2017 October, there was a fire in San Francisco. That one led to the death of 82 people and devastated townships around that forest. And because of that, one utility company went bankrupt. They had to give billions of dollars of fine. And how, when I say this, what does that relate to when it comes to sustainable goals? Obviously, it's related to climate action. It comes to uh, energy providing electric supply. It comes to goal number seven. Obviously, everything is related to goal number eight, which is on economic growth. And definitely on well-being too, because it also impacts the human life. So this is the association. And how is it related to us? Because I'm part of the technology provider. I was working with that particular customer. So I will talk of how that fire was caused and what could have been better. And what should be the future? Today, what I call innovation, when you are into the jobs, maybe after 10 years, this will be business as usual. This won't be innovation. Anymore. Today, we are, and that is what innovation is. It keeps on changing. The only agenda which can make this technology implementation successful. So, let me take this story. Why did the fire happen? And why did the utility go bankrupt? Because there was a very small device called a sea hook which broke. Why did it break? It was brittle. It broke the amount of rain which usually hits the uh, western part of US. So that was the situation. So there were trees around, there were localities around, the wind was dry, the wind direction was not predictable. A wire which was old and brittle, sorry, the sea book which was old and brittle broke and the high voltage wire was there and it fell. And the fire was there. So, so many uh, time was owned by the because of sea hook brittle, the acid should be in that workflow. They were doing one by one. Everybody has dealt of uh, resources. This stuff what have been prioritized. If somebody could have predicted that yes, assets in area X are more prone to fire, go and fix them first. That would have made life better. So then comes technology. These one prevention models the last 20, 25 years. Even wildfire prediction models have been there as research items. Makes you accountable to some regulatory compliance. It becomes a big business case. So on one side, organizations have targets of sustainability goals that they have put for themselves. On the other side, these are the bare minimum stock fire. Now, imagine and when you create a predict, 
what kind of locality were there. Every aspect comes in. For example, okay, fire has, you know, the example which I am giving on 17th of November, ultimately, the fire. So that is the kind of research which is needed and ultimately what is it doing? Goal number seven. And imagine this problem because cable, even underground, even overground, everywhere there is a issue. So, every step of it, when there is a business problem and you are face that business problem, uh, finding out the right solution for that, technologists will develop the solution. But People are from other fields, they actually map the solution and actually will create that end-to-end -end solution. To that particular, if any of you are interested in doing innovation for sustainable XYZ person, it was understood that whenever you do any infrastructure, Obviously, you have to focus on your deliverables, but think of the bigger picture. And think of simply you have to focus on your deliverables, but think of the bigger picture. And think of there are tons of stories in waste management today. There are tons of stories which my previous speakers are think of it in a much better better way than us, you know, because we are very biased. We don't think of what needs to be solved. be solved and then solutions obviously follow its path. So this was one example. Solutions obviously follow its path. So and again, those innovations of mine in the previous story, I was they were the whole intention being to increase the enrollment of Hampering in terms of practice, and then that will be brought up soon. So, the intent was to improve the sanitation infrastructure. But the important goal, goal number six. It's a very simple one. Okay, new toilets are being built. So, misreporting and was the main driver. Yes. One for floor, one for for wash machine, one for trowel, one for the wall. So, like that, four to five images were taken. The images are due to tag that time plan so that nobody can tamper on that. And those images are uploaded. Unless the toilet is cleaned and again uh, clean, unless the toilet is cleaned and again a uh, cleaner image is uploaded, it remains what is you go and the state of Andhra Pradesh. This is the 
district. This is the school. This is the status. How many is clean? How many is The request of the I would say a uh, big impact, not only this solution, the overall sanitation infrastructure project. Here, the government actually reported the increase. In These are the examples, and you know, this solution. Is so impactful in an organization. You are working if you have to choose, try and choose something. Obviously, there will be challenges. Maybe the level of margin which you get from this kind of projects will be less. But unless businesses are really investing in this kind of projects, or they are behind that, only also will be able to understand how best you can contribute. I remember Sir saying, sometimes not be. So I will close with that just. AI solution and that was AI or computer vision only that you take images and automatically computer vision and also imagine the way you can scale this kind of uh, implementation can be done across any public buildings right in petrol pumps in railway, but the problem will be in railway. You cannot imagine when it comes to and lots of places. These are user. You can immediately assess it and put a valid uh, measurement. Sir was mentioning measurement, right? Measurement with factual data that yes, this is not the or yes, yes, what we have mentioned outside, we report, we feedback with images, imagine the tons of data we have. But how do you utilize them better? Create a technology which really does that work, which you or me should not be doing that way. That is, just think of toilets and imagine how much it can be uh, made at scale. Second is, now, so this was one by midday meets, you know. It's very difficult. Today we cannot achieve it. I understand the but it is very easy. But to understand from a meal, whether that meal is rotten, egg is rotten, it's not easy. Maybe some bit of it can be done. The consistency, which is very light. If you see in today's world, Smell detection is actually a very important innovation. But we have to think that for inspection can challenge. So that comes to school, and there are other things. There are uh, student attendance, staff attendance. Etc. There are tons of other technologies around the of hygiene. In today's world, there are so much of work going on just, just with household based management. Even in India, we are doing such fantastic work. Sir can talk of them better than me. But Better plastic manufacturing world. So, one side is technology, other side is the problem. And then, if you see, I have tried to map some of the goals. 
along with this. And there are several other problems in the world. So, um, if uh, any of you, what I feel good on this subject is, um, whatever you are interested in, you will definitely find some way or the other to contribute to improve sustainability or to have your footprint in the game. So I would leave it open for all of you to think that what can you contribute and how can you make the world a better place. Thank you. Please settle down. Now we will have an ordinary session to celebrate UN. SDG 5 on International Zero Discrimination Day by Apurva Gorai, final year student of MBA. As a matter of fact, today, the 1st of March 2024, happens to be the International Zero Discrimination Day.
Thank you, Apurvo. Now we will have a short Redemption to celebrate UN SDG 5 on International Zero Discrimination Day by Novajit Chaudhary, MBA First Year. International Zero Discrimination Day Upalokhe, Amar Nibedon, Vidrohi Kogi Kaji Nojidul Islam. নারী কবিতার কিছু নির্বাচিত অংশ সামনের গান গায় আমার চক্ষে পুরুষ রমণী কোনো ভেদাভেদ নাই বিশ্বে যা কিছু মহান সৃষ্টি চিরকল্যাণ কর অর্ধেক তার করিয়াছে নারী অর্ধেক তার ন এ বিশ্বে যা কিছু এলো বাপ তা তো বেদনা অশ্রু বাড়ি অর্ধেক তা রানী আছে নর অর্ধেক তার নারী নরক কুণ্ড বলিয়া কে তোমা করে নারী হেও জ্ঞান তারে বলো আদি পাপ নারী নহে সে যে নর শয়তান অথবা পাপ যে শয়তান যে নর নহে নারী নহে ক্লিপ সে তাই সে নর ও নারীতে সমান মিশিয়া রহে এ বিশ্বে যত ফুটি আছে ফল ফুলি আছে যত ফুল নারী দিল তাকে রূপরস মধু গন্ধ শনির মল তাজমহলের পাথর দেখেছ দেখি আছো তার প্রাণ অন্তরে তার মমতাজ নারী বাহির এতে সাজা হান নর দিল ক্ষুধা নারী দিল সুধা সুধাই ক্ষুধাই মিলে জন্ম লোভিছে মহামানবের মহাশিশু দিলে দিলে কোন রনে কত খুন দিল নর লেখা আছে ইতিহাসে কত নারী দিল সিথির সিঁদুর লেখা নাই তার পাশে 
কত মাথা দিল হৃদয় উপারি কত বন দিল সেবা বীরের স্মৃতি স্তম্ভের গায়ে লিখিয়া রেখেছে কেবা কোন কালে একা হয় নিক জয়ী পুরুষের তরবারি শক্তি দিয়াছে প্রেরণা দিয়াছে বিজয় লক্ষ্মী নারী পুরুষ হৃদয়হীন মানুষ করিতে নারী দিল তাহে আধেক হৃদয় ঋণ ভরায় যাদের যশ ভরে না তো অমর মহামানব বরসে বরসে যাদের স্মরণে পরিমোরা উৎসব খেয়ালের বসে তাদের জন্ম দিয়াছে বিলাসী পিতা লব কুশে বনে ত্যাজিয়াছে রাম পালন করেছে সীতা তিনি নর অবতার পিতার আদেশে জননীর যিনি কাটেন হানি কুফার বেদনার যুগ মানুষের যুগ সামনের যুগ আজি কেহ রহিবে না বন্দি কাহার উঠিছে ডঙ্কা বাজি যুগের ধর্ম এই পীড়ন করিলে সে পীড়ন এসে পীড়া দেবে তোমাকে শুন মর্তের জীব মন্দিরে যত করিবে পীড়ন নিজে হবে তত পীর এতদিন শুধু বিলালে অমৃত আজ প্রয়োজন জবে যে হাতে পিয়ালে অমৃত সে হাতে পুট বিষ দিতে হবে সেদিন সুদূর নয় যেদিন ধরায় পুরুষের সাথে গাহিবে নারীর জয় নমস্কার ইনস্ট্রুমেন্টেশনিটি Presently employed in Central Pollution Control Board, the APIC Regulatory Authority in India as senior scientist. Experience in environmental impact assessment, industrial pollution control. Trained abroad in Canada, Germany, Austria and Japan. He also worked on projects like Finland, Germany, UK, in the field of adult, hazardous waste and emission. air and water quality management and faculty under mail declaration of south east asian countries united nation environment program author of various air quality monitoring protocols including guidelines on online continuous emission monitoring system for india member of various technical committees as expert members having authorship in 15 research reports and documents of apex regulatory authority cpcb india and 20 research paper published seven paper represent in international conference now i have a request to share his valuable insight sir please Now, it's a challenging time because we are here, assembled here. Uh, sorry. We are assembled here, suppose here on Buka World. The time is daily, we are running short. So, I will not let you Buka. <laughs> so, I will finish my job with the chat. So, yeah, we are getting presentations. I think there are a lot of slides. I will skip most of the slides. The basic thing. uh the topic uh, 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 is given to me in the sustainability and challenges of food water air climate change so that's a broad thing every sustainable goals all the 17 are definitely related to all this so a lot of discussion has already already uh, is there and dr ghosh has set the flow and then other speakers have also elaborated everything few questions are there i think i have heard the questions few uh, uh, why this goals are sustainable is achievable or not how they are taking that way always the government is not taking that what you are saying we are accepting say for example like in the last 15 days back there was a conference uh, i was discussing the problems of object of pathacharya see you know one chemical is pentachloroethylene Pentachloroethylene is one of the POPs, persistent organic pollutants. 
and it is banned, it is restricted, banned. And I mean, every country has banned, except the US. US, we have, we have signed the will be guarantee of all the future, except US and India. All the countries ratified put it in that. The reason is that the problem is that we have to maintain our forest, conserve our forest. We cannot cut the trees. Sagun can't ask the father. Sagun is doing treatment from the father because they are already naturally aged. So the chances of invasion of fungi or bacteria in the woods are less in the season woods. Now we are depending on these boards. And these boards are made of poplar type trees which are very soft, containing high quantity of moisture and it is very prone to have the invasion of fungi and all this. When the particle boards and all these are prepared, compressed, made, we have to treat it with some fungicides and insecticides. That's the reason. And the best insecticide in this purpose is pentachlorophenol. Pentachlorophenol is banned. It is worldwide banned. So, US started making sodium pentachlorophenol, the salt of not directly pentachlorophenol. And we are reporting it. Now, Gujarat in some industries have also started making pentachlorophenol. And without this, this cannot be done. Till then. I was discussing with Professor Bhattacharya as his domain is also with that one. See, uh, that innovative ideas with sustainability. See, alternate chemicals. So the country is working for the alternatives. Unless these alternatives are coming, I think we cannot sustain. And without this, today's world cannot sustain. So we have to make a balance of it. So, with that, so I, I will go very, very sustainable development. Yeah, I think the all the 17, 17 goals set is mainly based on this. The flow of the stars, demand of food and children, the first thing or Greek, it is also a coming picture. So, development of people, domination, domination. And we are coming to that one. Population growth. These issues are coming to the deforestation, carbon environments, then environmental degradation, air pollution, water pollution, soil pollution, global warming, climate change, everything coming in as an impact, as an impact on particular area. Now, scarcity of food, water, and other resources increase vulnerability and the risk of existence. So, only way to have sustainable. So, sustainable development comes with this. <laughs> but today's world, I think conservation means conservation is not, not talking about sustainable use. Conserve. So if your art, mother art has given something in under the mind, for whom you could keep it for lakhs of years, but in the fate of those minds, the product, the oats, it will definitely be inactive. 